week, we have seen some much bigger drivers of, of markets. Where you are now versus where your goal is, it tells you how, how far up you are. You've been missing out on quite substantial amounts of percent going into your pension. Hello and welcome to this week's Do More With Your Money podcast. And today I'm joined by Neil Rayner, Sophie Bennett and George Bell. We're going to be answering the most asked questions from the public, so I'll get straight to it. George, how have markets reacted to recent political changes? Good question. The honest answer is there hasn't been a massive move as a result of the change. Um, you know, the surprise introduction of David Cameron as Foreign Secretary, James Cleverly in terms of Home Secretary, but the biggest barometer you would normally see move is an indicator of sentiment around politics is the pound sterling. Not really much movement in terms of what we saw in the day. This pound has been pretty weak internationally since we had the Brexit referendum in 2016. Uh, very little movement in terms of bond yields or, or stock markets. So it grabs a huge amount of attention in terms of the media. But in international investment markets, it's not the main driver. This week, we have seen some much bigger drivers of, of markets. Things on the global agenda, inflation, economic growth, where are central banks going with interest rates? Just yesterday we had two big reports, um, US headline inflation data stepped down from 3.7% to 3.2%, which is back to where we were in March of 2021. And then the core reading, which is the reading we often talk about, it takes out energy prices and food prices, which are a bit more seasonal. That also moderated to four point, um, from 4.1% to 4%. In the UK as well, similar sort of trend. We had headline inflation 6.7 down to 4.6, and then the core reading from 6.1 to 5.7. So there's a few numbers in there, but they're all to be taken very positively. It's demonstrating what we've been talking about here at True Potential, that we anticipate the rate of inflation to slow and quite materially in the US, and we're seeing signs of that in the UK and now in Europe. And the reaction from markets was very positive. We saw a really strong day yesterday for equities. And we also saw a strong day for bonds as well. The biggest shift down was in the US bond yields uh, through the course of the day. And that meant we had a weaker dollar relative to the pound. So the reaction which we've seen this week in terms of a little bit of sterling strength is not coming from the cabinet reshuffle. It's actually just coming from what we're seeing on the international stage of inflation dynamics and what this means for central banks. So politics in the UK matter for us here at home, but the world's a big place and we invest accordingly. Thanks, George. That's great. My second question is for Neil. Tax relief, what is it and how does it work? So tax relief is relief that is given um, into your investment from the government. Um, as an example, uh, every £80 that you contribute into your pension, um, that is grossed up to £100. So you're given that initial um, uplift of 20% into your pension, which happens straight away. Um, so every time you put £100 in, uh, uh, sorry, £80, you get £100 into your pension. Um, the more that you put in, the more tax relief you get. Yeah, thank you. And is tax relief automatically added to my pension? Yes, yeah, so um, we obviously take the payments from the client once the client contributes into their pension. The tax relief we normally get around six weeks after um, when we claim that back, uh, but pretty quick and then gets added straight into the investment. Thanks. Fourth question is for Sophie. Can I transfer money from one policy to another in app and account? Yeah, simple question. You can do that on your client's site in particular. If you want to do a GIA twice a transfer, so very popular, you know, to use up those tax wrappers. However, you can't do that on your app. So it's just on your client's site at the moment. It's really simple. You can pop on, click on your GIA policy. There's a button that says GIA twice a transfer. You can click to use your full, say £20,000 ISO allowance, or you know if you've already used some already, it'll work it out for you how much you've got left. And then that will just transfer across accordingly. Um, so yeah, it's pretty simple. You can't sort of transfer funds from other types of policies to each other. Um, because if you were doing that, there could be some implications and you're probably best to give us a call and speak with an advisor. But for a standard GIA, twice a transfer, yeah, it's super simple. Thank you. Another question for you, Sophie. How does a workplace pension start? Can I opt out? And what would I miss out on if I opt out? Yes, yeah, so if you are 22 or older, when you do become employed, your workplace will now automatically enrol you into 
your auto enrolment pension. Um, so it's done automatically and it means that you know you're paying so much per month and they're paying so much per month. This would be subject to you know your employer. So you'd be able to get all those details from there. And yeah, as it's done all automatically, you would be notified of it too. So you'll receive some information as to who your pension provider is. And um, you know, could be for example, it could be us. And um, if you did decide that you were wanting to opt out for whatever reason, um, you would have to contact the provider. So if the provider was us, you'd have to contact us and let us know. And there's usually something called an, an opt out form that has to be completed to be able to do so. Um, there is a time limit on that as well, and that's all you know, confirmed when you do set, set that up. Um, so, but I'd definitely consider you know, implications. I think Neil could probably tell us a little bit more about why you might want to consider yeah, that. So you know, auto enrolment was set up because um, we can see probably further down the line that people will not have enough in their pension to retire on. So the government obviously have introduced the, red, the legislation to um, automatically enrol people into the pension. Um, you not only get your own contribution, you get your employer contribution, but then you also get the tax relief as well. And the benefits of doing so, if you weren't in that pension, would be you would be missing out on quite substantial amounts of percents going into your pension. So not only you do you get the money going into your pension from your employer, from the tax relief and from yourself, but also you would miss out on that growth as well over the, year, over the years and compounded over a 20, 25, 30 year period. That obviously makes a hell of a substantial amount. Yeah. We're going to link a blog below the video that discusses workplace pensions and the cost of opting out. But we'll pop that there so you can have a little look and see if there's any more information that you'd like to take from that as well. Next question for Neil. What investment options are available with my workplace pension? Um, various. Um, the government has, um, from a charging point of view, has got um, you know, uh, maximum charges of what we're allowed to charge under a workplace pension scheme. Um, but investment options can depend on um, the, the, the normal scheme that you'd be enrolled in or the company would start you in, but you've got different options. So as an example, you could invest in the true potential portfolios um, you could decide what risk you wish to take for that individual um, fund. You know, you could be balanced, you could be defensive. Um, it depends on your risk. It depends on your how much risk you want to take moving forward. Um, a lot of younger people could probably take a little bit more risk at the start of their careers when they're younger, um, you know, in, in order to get some growth. And then maybe towards the end, you may wish to reduce that risk uh, as you get older and you don't necessarily need a lot more growth because you've achieved it over a 25 30 year period uh, but there's a wide variety of the portfolios to choose from um, and you know you just have to have a look at what your attitude to risk is and decide which one you want to invest in Fab, you answered the next question really in that can i choose how it's invested yeah so once you set up with the scheme it'll give you the options and um, certainly from a true potential point of view um, which portfolio do you want to go into a default fund or do you want to go into a true potential portfolio fund obviously each portfolio fund has got its own um, different asset allocation according to your risk and um, so typically if you go higher risk it'll probably contain more of the equities within the portfolio as you go down from a lower risk point of view it will contain more of the bonds the gilt uh, the fixed interest securities and um, that would be you know probably give a, a more um, you know um, not safer return but a more constant return uh, the equity part of it is you know can be at times more volatile but then in obviously in growth periods can give much more of the growth so basically the higher the risk you go there's more shares or equities within that portfolio the lower you go there's more of the safer stuff the more it fixed interest corporate bonds and guilt Great. George what can we expect from the upcoming autumn statement um, probably a bit of fiscal tightening um, in terms of the way in which we see it play out. I mean, it's probably going to be a little bit unpopular when it comes to fruition, but ultimately the UK has got debt to GDP of over 100% before COVID. That was around 80%. So there's been a huge amount of government spending to get the economy back up and and running um, and that's that's cost and it's also more expensive actually now for the government to have debt because just under a third of the debt which they issue is actually linked to inflation so because although I talked about inflation has been coming down we've still got relatively elevated inflation compared to where we were pre-pandemic and therefore the cost of service in that is higher so for the international market if you were to see that they would probably actually see that as quite encouraging. It would suggest that the UK is 
potentially looking after its purse strings a little bit more and is acknowledging these higher servicing costs and bracing for that by not extending the fiscal deficit which we which we have. And Rishi's got a target of 5%. Um, do you think obviously that'll have a positive effect on the market if that's achieved? Um, it, 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 it depends. I mean, the, the, the actual gross level of uh, debt to GDP is going to be going to be the main driver in terms of how it's how it's viewed internationally. Um, I mean, the biggest biggest way in which we'll see it will be through the pound and also through the bond market in terms of reaction. Back end of last year was quite an extreme move, and we've had quite an extreme reaction from both. I don't anticipate that we're going to see anything as near as extreme um, in terms of a move one way or the other. Our view is it will probably be tightening, whereas in October it was much more about loosening, which was a concern for the international market. Brilliant. That was a, a very frequently asked question in terms of how do we think markets will react. Is there anything else you want to add to that, George, or do you think that covers that question? I would question? just echo what I mentioned at the beginning, that you know UK politics, even... You know, UK fiscal position is important for, for us here in the UK, but on the international stage, which is where we ultimately invest, um, there's, there's, there's much bigger drivers of, of markets at this point in time, and notably they are inflation, they are economic growth, they are central bank policy, but also how corporations are managing through this phase of, of, of the market cycle. So far, it looks as though corporate earnings in the United States have been more resilient for the third quarter. So we've, we're just working our way through the third quarter earnings set have proven to be stronger than what was initially expected. But as businesses often do, they try and just moderate expectations as we look ahead. So they're saying, yeah, I know we've managed to cope with higher costs, higher wage bills, and we're still generating good profits. But as we look ahead, just uh, just rein it in a little bit. And we're acknowledging that in terms of the way in which we invest. We're looking for areas where actually we can get under the surface of the market and say, OK, where are the stronger earnings growth dynamics going to come through? And where are the valuations for those companies more supportive in allocating our cash flow in that way? Great. Thank you, George. Sophie, can I make a one-off payment into my policy? Yeah, absolutely. Again, another really straightforward one. This one could be done both on your client site and on your app, so it's easily accessible. Um, it's our feature called Impulse Save, which is great because it lets you make ad hoc payments as and when you choose from as little as a pound. Um, I find it really, really handy for you know when you're coming at the end of the month and if you've got a little bit of extra money that you thought you weren't going to have, um, on top of you might have already had direct debits or whatever but you know you can just pop that straight in there um, or if you ever come up with you know with a small lump sum and you want want to invest that quickly you can do it there's no hassle or you know there's no have you know having to speak to somebody or going to a branch or anything like that it's really really easy it's just like buying something online you just pop in your card details if you've had them before you can save them pop in how much and then off it goes that's your bit done so yeah and also, if, you, if you're impulse saving into a pension, you'll get the tax relief on top as well. Yeah. Great. For a general impulse save, there's no maximum, is there? There's just the minimum as a pound. It is a minimum. I believe the maximum's around £99,000, so it's, it's a big maximum. It's more, it's more to do with the card limits from a bank's point of view, yeah. um, but you can impulse save more at different points. Yeah. I think that's more to do with card transactions. Yeah. So yeah, you can you can impulse it pretty much. Yeah, I mean, you've got your limits as well. So you know, you've got your limits on a pension. You've got your limit mm -hmm. on an ISA of up to twenty thousand pounds. Yeah. Um, but generally, for most people, um, you can impulse it as as much as you require. Brilliant. Another one for you, Sophie. How can I set up a direct debit? Again, that can be done on your client site and app. So just by going onto it, clicking into the policy that you want to set that up for, and there's an option for edit monthly investment. You just put in how much you want. There's a couple of dates that you can choose from as to when it would be collected and you know the card details essentially that all gets set up when you are setting up a direct debit it is I believe it's a couple of weeks that it takes for it to actually be set up and properly become active with your bank so i would just be aware of that um, and then it just off it goes but i feel the two work very good together and um, some people prefer to have a direct debit and it come out some people prefer you know might have a variable income where it might be easier to impulse save depending on what they've got available or a mixture of the two but i think having both there gives clients the option and another question, how can I set up a goal for my investment policy? So this again, on the client side, same thing, you go into the policy that you're wanting to set up a goal for, and then there's edit goal. 
we'd set sort of a term, you know, when do you want to hit this goal? Is it going to be 30 years time, 10, you know, and then you'd set up the value you'd want your policy to be by then. What it then does is it pops an extra line on, on your performance graphs essentially. So where you are now versus where your goal is, it tells you how, how far off you are. Um, and it also lets you know this is how much you should be contributing in order to hit that goal. So it can give you a good realistic idea in between that and speaking you know, with your advisor and then you've got, okay, this is my goal, how can you help me reach it? Um, it all fits together really nicely and regularly seeing that I think can help push you on to do the things that you're agreeing to reach yeah, it. Yeah, and also if you speak to your advisor, obviously we have an obligation to uh, annually review that goal. Um, so if you um, get promotion at work, um, or if you come into a lump sum, um, you might decide that you want to change your goal, or decrease your goal from a year point of view, from 10 to 15 or 15 to 10, dependent on your circumstances. The technology is great because then it will change the projection as to how quick you're going to achieve that goal because you've either contributed more um, or you've had a change in your circumstances. Fantastic. Thank you all for the questions today. If there's any other questions that you might have, you can get in touch with your financial advisor directly or the relationship management team if there's any questions from a head office point of view also. But thank you for watching. What is it about the world of finance that you've always wanted to know? The True Potential YouTube channel provides insight into personal finance as well as regular news and updates from the world of investing. This could be anything from understanding the basics such as budgeting all the way to investing and retirement planning. By subscribing to the True Potential YouTube channel, you can increase your financial knowledge, become better at investing and ultimately it will allow you to do more with your money. To subscribe, simply click the link below. We we'll look forward to seeing you there.